Welcome everyone to the Offensive Maneuvers Academics. Let's get started. I thought that before we started this heavy academics lesson, I'd kind of just give you a quick uh, clip of some actual dogfighting since uh, unfortunately there's not going to be much of that in this video. But uh, here you can see us uh, sort of applying something that uh, kind of from the Defensive Maneuvers course and then just adding in gunfire to it. So I'm rolling and strafing in this, and it's a very slow roll, and I'm just able to stay one step ahead of most of his fire. You can see I took a little bit of damage there, and I was actually pretty upset with myself about it, but uh, generally all I did was just a slow roll and a strafe, and he was content to just fire at me, <laughs> and uh, even though he was taking damage, and that is called broadsiding, which... I'm going to get to in the space combat maneuvering course is generally a very bad idea but uh, kind of just applying uh, from the defensive maneuvers course rolling strafing adding some fire and uh, if the important thing is if it's not working if he's still able to shoot you then try something else try something more aggressive now in order to do something exactly like that obviously I had a very slow roll going on I uh, it's in, important to have analog roll. Now you can still do this if you're a keyboard mouse or for whatever reason you don't have analog roll. If you have binary roll, all you got to do is you're just going to do your little roll increments in like just short short successions. So like every like couple seconds or so you just roll cuz you're going to roll faster, right? Um, and you can pretty much like I talked about in the defensive maneuvers course just time that with his fire getting to you. As soon as his fire is almost on you, you just roll a little bit. And then that gives you a few seconds where you can aim at him with impunity and then his fire is going to be close to you again and you're going to roll a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the, unfortunately, the most practical uh, thing that I'm going to show you uh, in this lesson because um, the rest of it is pretty heavy into the mechanics and all that. But uh, yeah, so that's one way to deal with circle strafers. Uh, so there you go. What you were probably seeing me do a lot in this video are these tight half or full rolls. Those are lag rolls. Uh, lag rolls sort of combine concepts from both defensive and offensive maneuvering. They are also sometimes called barrel roll attacks, although just like barrel rolls, barrel yaws, ricks rolls, you can't fire anything with pot shots from them while you're in them directly. But what I'm doing here is, say I'm coming at my target. I don't want to slow down because that makes me vulnerable, as we learned in the defensive maneuvering course, but I also don't want to overshoot my target. The way to maintain speed but not overshoot is to create a flight course that covers more distance than my target does. More distance at the same speed equals longer. The easiest way to do that is a quick tight spiral, which is the lag roll you see here. It also, if done correctly, uh, can terminate with you in a good firing position. So you just do a quick roll and then your target's right in front of you, yes. and then you take some shots and you're good to go. He starts to bring his guns back onto you and then you just do another lag roll. First, before we get started, I just wanted to give everybody a reminder about uh, what this course and what uh, all the elements inside it are all about. So first off, these courses are intended for beginners. Uh, there's going to be some more advanced stuff towards the end with the space combat maneuvering, and actually a lot of the offensive stuff is contained in the space combat course. But uh, for the most part, this is for somebody's first 10 hours in Arena Commander. So. Uh, you might get limited use out of this if you've been playing Arena Commander for a while, but I think especially the academics might benefit those uh, older players uh, more because they'll get to see things maybe in a new way and maybe try out some new things. Uh, kind of moving forward from here, academics are in-depth discussions of the topics. So we're getting kind of behind the scenes, down and dirty with what exactly is going on when we perform these maneuvers they're not really required to just get into the game and start practicing maneuvers. That's what the exercises are for. And you may have noticed that a lot of the exercises are done in solo flight, and that's because they're intended to be able to be done solo, uh, either in free flight or sometimes in Vandal Swarm, so that players can get busy with them right away uh, with no problems. Uh, it's also not intended that 
they're directly applicable in combat. Uh, they're going to get you comfortable with the controls, and they're going to get you thinking in the right way. You know, it's like defensive maneuvers, generally rolling and strafing is a good idea, but uh, it's never going to be, I need to do these exact inputs at this time, and that's the best possible thing I can do in combat. So uh, knowing how to adapt is going to be a big part of being su successful as a pilot and arena commander. And... Uh, maybe after people have done the exercises and they want in more information, they go back and do the academics, then they understand the mechanics behind the maneuvers more, and they're more able to adapt on the fly to given situations because they're able to apply that knowledge. So that's kind of the, the reason why I sort of separated it out, uh, so that new players can get immediate help, and then they can return, look at the academics, and maybe uh, learn how to dogfight a little bit more intuitively. All right, so back to the lesson. Objective, gain an understanding of the mechanics of lining up and stabilizing shots while leaving options for avoiding fire and manipulating positioning and distance to provide an advantage. So how are we going to do this? Well, first we're going to take you through a series of animations that uh, will help you understand how to manipulate your velocity vector and that of your uh, projectiles to achieve your desired attack run. That's pretty much the meat and potatoes of this lesson. Uh, you're going to do some exercises, um, including some, you know, maybe a little bit fancier stuff like the, uh, the legacy rule. And then, uh, the next course is the space combat maneuvering course. And this sort of takes offensive and defensive maneuvers, which are by themselves are these pretty static independent things. You kind of combine them and you add in a lot of, uh, not really so defined, you know, uh, stick and rudder skill stuff, but more of just kind of a thinking game, like the psychology of combat, boom and zoom mentality, attacking with only with an advantage, that kind of thing. And that's what the space combat maneuvering course is all about. So uh, this right now is just getting you comfortable with uh, offensive maneuvers, you know, kind of the mechanics of them, uh, the controls, uh, inputs required, that kind of thing. So uh, that's sort of what we're focusing on today. All right, so we're going to show you some diagrams here. Uh, it's very vector mathy, but I promise you it'll be worth it once you uh, understand what's going on here. All right, so for these diagrams, the lengths of the vectors are depicted as one second intervals. In other words, after one second, the shipper projectile will be at the tip of the arrow. Range is depicted as is time of flight. Time of flight is the time in seconds that the bullet will travel from being fired to hitting the enemy ship. Because it is possible for ships to maneuver out of the way during the time of flight of perfectly aimed shots, a high time of flight is bad for being able to actually hit a maneuvering target. In this frame, you can see two stationary ships 1,400 meters from one another. Time of flight for projectiles fired from the Hornet will be approximately 1.2 seconds. Forgive the poor scaling of the diagrams, the point is to emphasize the mechanics, not the exact number. Alright, let's speed up the Hornet and see what happens. This new blue vector represents the velocity of the Hornet. Normally velocity vectors are drawn from the object that holds the velocity, but in these examples we are drawing them from on top of the head of the projectile velocity vector, which is in purple. This is because in Arena Commander, projectile velocity is additive with ship velocity. This means that, as in this case, projectiles that are rated to fire at 1200 meters per second when fired from a ship moving at 200 meters per second will inherit the ship velocity and tr will travel at 1400 meters per second. As a result of this higher projectile velocity, the time of flight in this example drops to one second. Remember that a lower time of flight will result in a higher probability of hit. What can we learn from this example? Well, it's clearly advantageous to have forward velocity toward your target, as it reduces the time to impact of your shots, thus reducing the likelihood that your opponent will be able to dodge them. Next, let's set the enemy fighter offset a little bit and give him a little speed. In this example, the Hornet's gun cross is indicated by the white cross up towards the top of the screen. You can see the lag line and the lag pip going from the gun cross toward the target in blue. In this example, since the enemy is no longer stationary, the impact point is now in front of the enemy. So now the Hornet pilot must lead his target. The lag pip and the lag line are computed by the computer to give this indication to the pilot. So to reemphasize what we're seeing here, 
The projectile velocity is indicated by the additive of the two arrows toward the bottom of the screen, the blue and the purple arrows. You can see that a projectile after one second will be at the tip of the blue arrow. The scythe motion is indicated by the red arrow. After one second, the scythe will be at the tip of the red arrow. Because of this, the gun cross is currently over the location where the projectile will hit the scythe. Now let's examine what this looks like with a lower projectile velocity weapon. You can see here that the purple arrow is now shorter as it is indicating 800 meters per second, possibly a ballistic weapons loadout. The ship's velocity is still 200 meters per second. Once again, yes I know this is not to scale, it is just to give you the idea. As a result, the ship must lead its target more. That's why the Hornet had to yaw left a little bit here. Now he is leading his target more, and the lag line and that leads from the gun cross to the lag pip is longer. This indicates a longer time of flight. Indeed, the time of flight is now 1.4 seconds. In addition, the longer lag pip line can cause problems for the Hornet pilot, as the scythe may now be obscured behind fuselage or railing. Also, long lag pips result in the aimer needing to make larger aiming corrections when the targeted ship does move. With longer projectile travel times such as in this example, probability of hit diminishes drastically. In the next example, we're going to increase the projectile velocity but decrease the ship speed. You'll see that the result is mostly the same. Whether the decreased additive projectile velocity is caused by decreased ship speed or decreased rated projectile velocity, the result is the same, a longer lag pip line and less probability of hit. What can we learn from this example? Well, it's obvious that slower ships or pilots who don't prefer to fly directly at their target should avoid low projectile velocity weapons. Faster ships can equip lower projectile velocity weapons and still get away with it. Let's head back to the original example with the enemy ship moving. Here you can see we've added two new symbols. The star indicates the point in space at which the projectiles will meet the enemy ship. The TVI indicates the current velocity vector direction of the Hornet. Let's give the scythe some more speed and see what happens. Here we can see that if the Hornet maintains its previous heading, the projectiles will fall behind the scythe and will miss. This must be corrected. Straight in attack. The first way to get shots on target is also the simplest. The Hornet simply needs to point the nose of the ship as required to bring the lag pip onto the target. Advantages to this method are that it's simple and quick. It reduces the chance of collision in this particular case and it allows for a low time of flight, approximately 1.1 seconds. Disadvantages include the inability to pull more than a certain amount of lead pursuit, which will often result in an overshoot as the Hornet nears the target collision potential during high deflection shots, which are essentially head-on shots, and a substantial lag pip line, which can cause all the problems mentioned in the previous examples. Parallel attack. In this example, the Hornet demonstrates a paralleling attack. To do this, he strafes in the direction that the enemy ship is flying while maintaining orientation toward the target using pitch and yaw. Note that the TVI is now in the bottom left of the screen, indicating the Hornet's direction. Since the velocity vectors are still additive, the green arrow represents the path of the projectiles, and the star once again indicates the expected impact point of the projectiles and the scythe. Because of the geometry of the velocity vectors, time of flight climbs to 1.3 seconds. Advantages to this method include, it allows for longer time on target, as the Hornet is no longer closing with the scythe and can maintain a somewhat stable relative position as it is paralleling its course. The lag pip line is much shorter, and it reduces the Hornet's profile toward the enemy. Disadvantages include, it's more difficult, it requires the pilot to fly in a direction that he may not be able to see easily, which can result in collisions. It results in a higher time of flight, which means less probability of hit, and it allows for the enemy ship to return fire easily, as the Hornet is stationary relative to the scythe. All right, so here's a video of a mostly parallel attack in action. I kept switching uh, back and forth to skidded attack because at the time I wasn't trying to record a parallel attack. Uh, multiplayer isn't working right now, so I have to use old videos. But you'll see that uh, in certain instances here, the TBI on the right side is pegged. 
the lag pip is very short and uh, range is generally not really increasing or decreasing so I'm paralleling my target's course for the most part here. Skidded attack. The final example represents a maneuver that is part of Legacy Fleet's recommended maneuvers. As with anything else, it may not work in every situation, but it's a good place to start. The skidded attack combines the previous two methods. The Hornet sets a velocity vector that is diagonal to his nose using throttle, forward strafe, and left strafe. The consequence is a decently sized green vector for the projectiles, resulting in somewhat better time of flight, approximately 1.2 seconds. Advantages to this maneuver include the ability to pull a larger amount of lead pursuit than is possible when using a straight-in attack, more options for staying in position, as there is decent forward velocity to get closer, but a lag roll, which is coming later, can be used to dissipate closure if needed. The ability to see the TBI and thus the direction of flight, reducing the chances of collisions, and a smaller size lag pip line than a straight-in attack would give. Disadvantages include possibility for collision with the target and that it's more difficult than a straight-in attack. So this is us demonstrating a skidded attack and uh, what you're going to see here is the TVI about halfway off to the left side of the screen, a uh, very short lag pip, a uh, very slowly decreasing range, and uh, a fairly stable firing solution. Now I obviously wasn't trying to kill my buddy here because we were just demonstrating something but uh, you know, you can see how easy it'd be to get shots on tar target. Of course, he's not really maneuvering or anything, but this is sort of just showing you the mechanics behind the maneuvers. All right, so to wrap it up, here's what's next. Uh, next, you want to try the exercises and play around in free flight, see what maneuvers work for you. Uh, just kind of want to remind you, different ships, you're in a Super Hornet or a Cutlass or... Uh, an M50, uh, different performance characteristics, you're going to need to use different tactics and maybe use boost more, maybe use boost less in the same in the case of the M50. So uh, just kind of play around and that's like the point of these, getting comfortable in your ship. Um, find a friend for target practice. One of the biggest barriers for new players is being able to aim accurately. So uh, is, if you can kind of take some variables out and just focus on aiming uh, with a friend that would probably help you out a lot. And then uh, you could make an effective use of time. You have one person practice aiming, the other person practice defensive maneuvering, and then you just switch back and forth. So uh, work out good. And then uh, contact me, uh, slash you, slash whitesnake8, or ask on the legacy forums uh, pretty much anywhere, and uh, we'll get back to you um, with any questions you might have. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks for watching and uh, fly safe.